Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing how to make some custom ball physics in Scratch and it's always been a hard time trying to make things bounce on the floor like if a player dies you can make these particles spread up across the floor and then I can make another tutorial that uses pen instead which is much harder and probably longer but if you want to see how to make ball physics with clones in Scratch don't forget to like, subscribe and share and let's get on with the video so, firstly, we need something to actually shoot those balls. So, name the sprite tank and delete all the costumes. And you can make your own custom tank. So just zoom right in until the screen is just a few squares wide and draw a tank. So, I'm going to make one with a cube in the, at the back and in a circle. And then you can add one here and then move it to the back layer. So that makes a pretty good looking can. Maybe I can just move this forward. That looks better. So I'm going to just make it blue and there's my cannon. Pretty good. Of course, you can customize it to make it whatever you like. So let's get to the code. Put a when green flag clicked and make it go to the middle. And of course, we want it to go to the front layer. And if you want to aim, you could use arrow keys to turn, but it's just easier to make it point towards the mouse pointer. So now it's always going to turn towards the mouse pointer. And then we need the tank to shoot. So make a new sprite and call it projectile. And then we are going to zoom really, really, really small. And if you look at the size of the tank, this part, that's like the shot cannon, you can see it's just a bit over two squares wide, that's eight pixels. So you want to make a ball that's less than two pixels wide. So I'm just going to make it one outline and that should fit pretty well into the tank. So if your tank's bigger or smaller, I think this is a pretty good size. You can see on screen, the ball fits perfectly. And then the next thing you need to do is go to the projectile sprite and make it hide since this will be making clones of itself. And then what you need to do is you need to put a when I start as a clone. And you might be confused as when uh, where these clones are going to be created. So what you're going to do is go to the tank sprite and put another when green flag clicked and put a forever loop and these are going to be the controls to shoot so put an if and put an or here so for me I'm going to be using either you're clicking or you're using the spacebar so put if mouse down or the key space is pressed then you can create clone of the projectile and of course you don't want it to be like propelling so many of them outside since we have a clone limit so I'm going to be setting it to go every 0.1 seconds so we're going to be shooting 10 projectiles every second and now to the ball physics when I start as a clone you need to of course go to the tank and point towards the mouse pointer and then we need to move just a little bit forward so that we're in the correct direction and show because this is going to be a clone machine so the original sprite should not be shown but the clones will so you need to make two new variables called speed x for this sprite only so that each clone has its own value and speed y for this sprite only and then you need to set speed x and speed y set both of them to put a divide and put 10 in the end. This is how fast it's going to be going. The smaller the number, the faster it'll be going. And then you can put a plus here and a plus here. And you put a mouse X and mouse Y for speed X and speed Y. Make sure you don't mess them up. And then here, just for that little element of randomness, put minus one to one so that every time you shoot, the ball doesn't go in exactly the same place. So it gives like a stream instead of a line. And then we need to make these ticks, right? So put a repeat 500 and make a new block 
that runs without screen refresh called tick. Put the tick block in there and then repeat 40. This is if you want to keep your clones. So 500 will be the amount of frames that your clone will be on screen. And then this 40 will just be the animation to go out. So you can also put tick there and then you can change ghost effect by 2.5 and then finally delete this clone so we need to figure out what this tick block is going to be doing so first we need to of course switch costume to the ball so let's name this costume ball and we also need another costume called normal and you need to shift this costume two squares to the right so this is going to be for detection inside the walls and make sure it doesn't go inside. So this is just going to make it look more natural. So now switch costume to the ball costume and change speed Y by minus 0.5. This is the amount of gravity. So of course you could make a gravity variable and put it there and then put change X and change Y and make it change X by speed X and change Y by speed Y and then put if and now we need to make another sprite called the level sprite so this is just going to be what your ball is going to be bouncing around so i'm going to make the saturation zero and just make a little gray playground for my projectiles so i can put one in the bottom one on the top i'll make it a bit darker And don't forget to cover up all sides or else the balls will glitch off screen. Or if you want, you could make it to projectile to the edges. So those are the four sides. I'm just going to add some things in the middle for like overhangs. Just for testing. And for a little bit of spice up, you can add a slope just to test that. Let's add that there. Okay, that's great. That's a good playground. So back to the projectile. So, um, put that there. Back to the tick. If it's not touching the level, then what you want to do is you need to stop the script. Because all of the script ahead will be about if it's touching the level. And then you need to repeat until not touching level. change x by 10, change y by 10, and put these to times minus 1 on the other sides. So when you times, when you multiply something by minus 1, then we, it turns it to a negative or vice versa. So you can set the speed x to this and speed y to the other. So if speed x was 10, and you multiply it by minus 1, it's going to be a minus 10. And if you do the opposite, then it's going to be 10. So you need to put another block called find normal. So this is going to be the collision detection and run without screen refresh. So put that here and make another block called bounce. And then what you need to do is make it run without screen refresh and put nx and ny in two inputs. Put the bounce block over there. And then what you need to do is you can put in the bounce block sign. So set that to sign and this to sign too. And you need to set this to cos actually since y will be based on cos. And then you need to make a new variable called dir for direction. I'm just going to make it direction and put for this sprite only and put direction in both. So that's telling us how much it will bounce and then switch costume to the ball. And repeat 10. Change X and change y 
by multiply 0 0.5 in both of them times the sine of direction and the cos of direction. And then inside of that repeat loop, put if not touching level, stop the script. And then finally delete this clone if none of that worked. So that's the tick script, and now we need to do the find normal and bounce nx and y. So just in case, put the level and set it to when green flag clicked, go to x00 zero, zero, and go to front layer, just in case. Like if your level is on off-centered. So first let's work on the find normal script. So we need to switch costume to the normal, that's the one you moved over two squares to the right, and then you set dir to zero. And then you need to point in direction, direction, which makes sense. And then if you're, if you're touching the level, then repeat until you are not touching the level, rotate 15. So we need to make another block called rotate and then put n in here and run without screen refresh. So put the rotate block and rotate 15 degrees. And then set direction to dir minus 15. Oops, not 115. And then make this into an if else and put a repeat until touching level, rotate minus 15. Set another variable called dir direction start, <laughs> direction start for the sprite only. Set direction start, sorry, this was direction start. Set it just a direction. And then set the normal direction to zero and point in direction dir. And then put a repeat until touching level outside of that loop. And rotate 20. And then finally, in this script, set direction to put a divide block, 2 at the end, and put direction plus dir start. Direction and direction start together. And then now let's figure out the bounce nx and y script. So we need to make another variable called dot product for the sprite only. So set the dot product to a plus and a times on both sides. So put nx and ny here on the second and fourth, and then put speed x and speed y on the first and third inputs. And then change speed x and speed y by, for the speed x, put a times and put dot product in the second input and minus 1.6 times an x. So this minus 1.6 is just how much it'll bounce. So the greater the number, the more it'll bounce. And then for the speed y, just put ny, and then that's the bounce one finished. And then finally, we just need to do rotate. And if you want, you can change this n to by, which makes more sense. And then change dir by by, and then point in direction, direction. So hopefully this will work. Here's the entire script. This is the when I started the clone script and when green, green flag clicked. There's the tick script, the rotate script, find normal and bounce nx. 
and you can see these balls kind of lag whenever they hit the ground so to fix that it's probably in the bounce nx and ny so make sure that this is a change speed x and multiply by the dot product let's try that again <laughs> it works perfectly you can see these balls are going pretty laggy but make sure you don't shoot them too fast they work pretty well as long as they're not shot really quickly i can do another episode on this to make them run smoother but i think the problem is if you go to costumes this this fine normal script you need to move this maybe three squares over and it'll have a better detection system yes that seems to be working much better so if yours is lagging then either make the balls bigger or move them more to the side for the normal script. So I'm just going to remove the outline altogether. And these balls are perfect. They're working. And I'm going to remove here as well. They do seem to be a bit like bouncy when they hit the ground, but I'm sure you can do that. And if it's even laggier, I'm just going to move the normal even further. And be careful, this can cause even more lag, so don't go crazy with how far you're going to make the second sprite away from the middle. Because you, then you can get it trapped in corners and they, they don't fall down very well. And I, this is actually a pretty good ball simulation. This can be used for when a player dies. So I hope you like this video, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you in the next one.